Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'm actually going to be bleeding the Atessa system. Everything is back in the car now. The subframe is back in, everything is hooked up. And so the final step is to get the fluid in, bleed it, and hopefully start driving this thing here pretty soon. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I've got a lot of stuff going on here in my garage with the cars. Also some things down in my basement. Take a look back through the video catalog. Uh, chances are there's probably something in there you might find useful. Let's get into the video today. All right, so a couple of things that you're gonna need to do before you get started. I've got my battery set and connected to a battery tender because I'm gonna actually need to run the Atessa pump in order to pump and bleed the fluid out. That's connected up so that way we don't run out of juice while we're doing this. Inside the car, there is a kick panel that you will need to remove. It is actually this panel, and it sits right here, because what you're going to need access to is this white clip. So that white clip you're going to unplug and plug back in a number of different times in order to bleed the system. So go ahead and do that and get that done now. I've already got this pulled aside, but what we're going to do here is, you can see the this reservoir for the Atessa system is completely bone dry now. We have to fill it up. Um, you can see there is a max and min line there, max, min. We are going to actually fill this thing up. First step is filling it up 30 millimeters above the max line. Um, because this Atessa system is completely dry, you might actually need to fill it up more than that in order to uh, in order to get enough fluid down through all the lines down into the Atessa pump, which basically sits right here directly underneath that. I've got one of these little uh, hoses that's left over from filling my transfer case, and it looks like it's probably going to be pretty handy for just pumping this stuff in there. You could probably do this with a funnel, but the way that this thing's kind of back in there, I don't want to spill it everywhere, so I'm just going to pump it in. All right, you can see I've got it filled up now beyond the max point, but you can see at the very bottom down here, there's actually no fluid in this. So this is a feed side and this is a return side. At least that's the best that I can understand from what I've read so far. Now, in order to get uh, fluid down into the in order to get fluid down into the system, which is under the car, and then have it be able to return back to here so that everything gets filled up, you have to go down under the car and actually open a bleed valve. So now I'm under the car, that's the diff. And that right there is the bleed valve that we need to open up. So apparently all you have to do here is open this up and let gravity do its work. It should bleed that system so that way fluid is coming out. All right, so I'm gonna get a tube, connect that up, and then open that bleed valve and then I'll check every once in a while to make sure that the reservoir doesn't go dry. Let's do that. All right, you can see my setup there, and the fluid is starting to come out now and is filling the bottle. So I think we are probably good. I might actually burp it one more time and then uh, fill the reservoir up here and make sure that it's 30 millimeters above the max line, and then we'll start the bleeding procedure that, that goes all the way down here where the uh, transfer case is. All right, so now we got this fill line here above we got the line of fluid here above the max line. Um, the next step is to go up to the transfer case and start bleeding the fluid there. You're going to have to make trips back and forth here to keep this filled up because it's going to eventually pump fluid all the way through and this, this line should drop. So we'll have to come back here every once in a while to keep an eye on it. Alright, so before we get started in here, we got to put the key in. And then the key, you will turn it to the on position. And then you'll be down in here, and you'll disconnect, I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, then you'll disconnect this, and that should turn the Atessa pump on. And then you'll be underneath the car, cracking the bleeder valve open for a second, and then closing it. Cracking it open for a second, and then closing it. You're going to stop bleeding the Atessa at the transfer case when there's no more air bubbles coming out. Alright, that's, that's what we're going to go do now. All 
right, so just by turning that on, then you can see that it pressurized the system and it dropped that fluid level down now. So I'm gonna add a little bit more, get that line back up here, and then I'm gonna go and start actually, I'm gonna go then unplug that um, jumper and then start the bleed process at the um, transfer case. So fill this up, then we're gonna start the process. All right, we're gonna unplug this jumper and get going. Yep, now you can hear the pump running. Let's get this hose put up on here. Hopefully you can see that all right. All right, now we can get up in here with this. Yeah, you can see that really ugly old fluid coming out now. All right, I'm gonna leave that cracked. I'm gonna leave that closed for a minute. I'm gonna go check the fluid level in the trunk, and I'll be right back. Yeah, so that's good. Everything is working. I had that top off a little bit of fluid in the back. Um, you basically just keep doing this until the fluid comes all the way through, and you get uh, the the clean fluid because this is the old dirty fluid that was still in the line. Um, yeah, so once you get the clean fluid coming through, uh, and then you'll be done with this step, and we can move on to the next bit. All right, I've bled the system up at the, uh, all right, so I finished bleeding the system up there at the transfer case. I'm now back here into the trunk and you can see, let's see if I get this thing to focus. Now you can see here, the fluid levels dropped again, but the bottom reservoir is starting to fill. So that's good, that's what you wanna see. Now we move into the next step. I'm going to fill up the, um, the reservoir above the max line again. Then I'm going to start the last part of the bleeding procedure, which is to plug and unplug the jumper a bunch of times in order to get this air gap in the bottom at five millimeters. And then you're done. That's how you bleed everything. So let's do that. All right, this is the last part of this. I got the reservoir filled back up. I am now going to go and do the jumper. Uh, some people said that they had to do the jumper about 20 times. Some people said they had to do the jumper 50 or 100 times. I'm hoping I don't have to do it 50 or 100 times, but we'll see. And uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, now let me uh, let me go get something to measure that because that looks like that might be pretty close to five millimeters. Uh, let me take a measurement and see where we're at. Nope, that is still more than five millimeters. So let's keep going. All right, I've finished bleeding its system. And if you look here, it is right at about five millimeters. So we should be good. And this is, eh, it's just above the max line, but I'll leave it there, it's fine. I'd rather do that than just have, than have to break the turkey baster out. But that's it, Tesla system is bled. You put your cover back on now. All right, so the next thing is, get up under here and check for leaks. That all looks fine in there. This is the area you really need to look for leaks. In here, checking all of your Tesla lines. Making sure there's no drips. There's no um, ah something falling in your eye. These all feel dry. Fuel lines. These are the new fuel lines here. All right, let's slide up under here and look for leaks. Up under there is. Let's see if you can see in there. That's where these other Tesla lines are. These all feel tight. I don't see anything dripping, which is good. Nothing looks to be leaking anywhere. 
All right, well, I think we're going to go ahead and call that good. I don't see any leaks here at the banjo bolt. I don't know if you can see that. This banjo bolt right there is, uh, that's where the, um, the line attaches. That looks good. Everything looks dry there. All right, well, there you go. That's how you get your Testa system bled. Um, hopefully this video was helpful for you. Leave me a thumbs up if it was. I'll see you in the next one.